The biggest problem that faces the entirety of America and is definitely one of the biggest problems in the black community is ingratitude and an entire lack of perception. They have no gauge between slavery and now. They don't have any gauge between Jim Crow and now. They don't have any gauge between 1980 or now. We went from a country that enslaved black, uh, black people. Most of them, not all of them. A lot of people think slavery was nationwide. It wasn't. It was limited to the South. And remarkably, <clears throat> remarkably few slaves were actually in the country at the time. There were entire countries nearly made up of slaves. Those would be Haiti and Jamaica, which is a pretty consistent reason why both Haiti and Jamaica are almost entirely black to this day. And they're free countries now, but they didn't used to be. Millions of people uh, owned by the Spanish and the French. But uh, America, who was comparatively limited in slavery, still perpetrated it for hundreds of years. Not in all of it. Of course, some kind of pro-black, you know, angry black activists uh, would say that, oh, the rest of the country still benefited from it. You know, I'm not going to show you the math on that. Um, but, you know, the, the slaves were, were uh, traded, you know, on the New York Stock Exchange, or goods produced by slavery were traded on the New York Stock Exchange. So the North benefited too. Okay. But now we're equating owning slaves, whether it's someone who was a manservant or somebody who was beaten to death after picking cotton their entire life, you know, two very different fates. But yes, slavery is slavery and it's never okay, but we can't, we're not allowed to have any perception in that regard either. And then we get all the way to today where you could work a minimum wage job, but if you're in the projects where you have uh, sectioned housing and very low rent, you might be prone to be in this place called The Hood, but you see everybody in Nike apparel, $200 Beats headphones, $100 plus dollar iPhones, Gucci belts, which I think are around $200 too, I'm noticing a theme, fucking, what else, uh, Air Jordans, those are $130 shoes at least, fucking, maybe drives a nice car. Maybe uh, there's some nice shit in that car, like a new stereo and a subwoofer. And in his house, he's got an Xbox One and a fucking flat screen TV. Oh, but he's oppressed. And he lives in the hood. He's, he's oppressed. Where did he get all those nice things? Because the government gave him sectioned housing with low rent. Where he could afford to live like a much wealthier person even though he gets paid as much as anybody else. So I don't even have to go the route and say, oh, he got all that nice shit because he sold some uh, sold drugs or stole something. No, no, dude. This systemically racist country gave him sectioned housing that has very little rent, and he was able to spend his money elsewhere. Maybe he doesn't have all those things, because maybe he's got to pay child support to the three different women he knocked up. So I want to know why uh, all these black people can afford all this shit and they can't afford condoms. You know, why you got to meet so many black women who uh, <clears throat> have three kids by three different men and they're 21. Or worse. I've seen worse. That's not a genetic thing. That's not a race thing. That's a cultural thing. It's not even a religious thing. I don't think there's anything in black churches I've ever heard about condoms or of the fucking devil. <laughs> if you want to stay out of poverty, by the way, no matter what race you are, but especially if you're black, all you got to do is three things. Finish high school, get a job, don't have kids out of wedlock. That's it. That's it. Less than 6% of black people who meet those three requirements are in poverty. 
And believe me, you don't even have to be super good at football or basketball to get into good school. If you get good grades and you're black, you're at the front of the line. Way ahead of the white people and definitely way ahead of Schrodinger's person of color, the Asians, who are the most disadvantaged. Their scores are the most penalized, handicapped. Meanwhile, they add points to the black SAT score. They want you to succeed. For, have you forgotten, by the way, that school here is free for all of us? There's a lot of places in Af Africa where they've never had a school for generations. Not a, a school, whether you had to pay to go or not. A lot of them are in certain, you know, poor places. Not all of Africa is like that. But, you know, whenever you think of that stereotypical fucking UNICEF humanitarian crisis Africa, yeah, there's a lot of places that are like that. They wish they could live in your fucking systemically racist, horribly oppressive, fucking fascist nightmare America. That's where all the illegal immigrants come from, because they want to actually be able to make some money. Because our economy is so much better than theirs, that they can send a lot, the equivalent of a lot of fucking money, home, if they work under the table for less than minimum wage doing something like picking fruit. America's fucking awesome. And right now, say what you will about 1860 or 1960, but right now, it's never been better to be a black guy. And yet black people have never been more petulant or angry. Never. Not even in 1960. And unfortunately, certain civil rights leaders of yesteryear who are unfortunately uh, held up alongside great humanitarian good and righteous and moral people like Martin Luther King Jr., guys like Malcolm X, who unendingly preached about don't be a house nigga, never side with the white man. And, and you know what's even worse? Then the house nigger who sides with the white man is the black man who just wants to be out of the problem. I don't want to be a house nigger and I don't want to be a fucking black panther. I just want to sit on the sideline and mind my own fucking business. This whole fucking garbage nonsense tirade about centrists has been going on forever. It's <laughs> There's nothing an ideologue hates more than somebody who's indifferent. Well, I hate people who are indifferent sometimes in the culture war, but I hate people who are condescendingly indifferent. I value black racists. I value social justice warriors. I value psychotic feminists more than people who whine about people having a discussion. Not the guy who's minding your own business, mind you. The guy that Malcolm X was talking shit about. But the guy who says that we shouldn't be discussing these things. That guy is a worse cancer than the fucking crazy, the ungrateful the destructive, the liars, the hypocrites. The guy who says to everybody to shut up is, is fucking cancer and should never be respected for a fucking second. But a close second to him are these liars. I'm sorry. It's a great time to be black in America. It's a great time to be black in some other places too, especially in Europe. You know, that other place that black people talk shit about. And even in certain places in Africa, it's a great time to be black. 2017 is a great time to be alive because you, you don't just got your Beats headphones and your iPhone and your Nike apparel and your Gucci belt and your Air Jordans and your fucking uh, snap brim fucking $50 hats and you don't just got your subwoofer and your fucking uh, Escalade and you don't just got your spinning rims and you don't just got your entire fucking... Just everything any black musician you ever liked available at the touch of a button, downloaded within 30 seconds and ready to play on all your nice shit. You don't just got that Xbox with the fucking NBA 2K17. You don't, you, you have the internet, you have air conditioning, you have electricity, you have paved roads, you have free schools, you have doctors who have to treat you even if you can't pay for it and the, the, the debt for medical bills may eventually cripple you, but they can never, ever refuse to treat you. You will never die in an emergency because somebody won't treat you. 
You can get fucked by the insurance companies, but the doctors will never fuck you. Supermarkets full of food. And all of the extra advantage over other races you have just for being black. And you know what you're going to do about it? You're going to kneel for the national anthem. Because you know who the enemy of the black man is? It's America. The system. Get the fuck over yourself. Stop lying. Stop lying to me. Stop lying to yourself. Have some fucking dignity. This is the quality that Martin Luther King Jr. most wanted for you. Was dignity. And believe it or not, nobody's trying to take it away from you. Because, unfortunately for Malcolm X, yeah, there, there's, there's still a few racists. Some of, some of these people that you call racists and, and white nationalists and white supremacists don't even really care about black people. They just want respect for white people. Because there's you and all your sympathizers and your sycophants running around saying white people are evil. America's evil. No, it's not. No, they're not. Stop lying. And even beyond all of those people, whether they're racist or just actually are proud to be white, and even more so than you, even more so than the fucking culture that coddles you and the people who lie to you and tell you you're oppressed, are all the people in the middle the vast majority of us minding our own fucking business. The one Negro that Malcolm X warned you about are the people making life good for you. Whether they're black or white. It's actually a really fucking good time to be alive. Forget what CNN tells you. There's never been less war. There's never been less death. There's never been less sickness. There's never been less suffering. And there has never ever been less racism and there'll be less tomorrow of all of those things there's never even been less murder even for all the gang violence that you don't want to talk about there's never been less murder there's never been less rape you don't live in saudi arabia you don't live in sudan you don't live in china you don't live in venezuela you don't live in antarctica you live in america Keep your chin up, for fuck's sake.